on today's episode. This is what we expect when we receive a, a new development board, just your average packet with uh, a bunch of bits in it. Okay, neat, it'll do the job. But this uh, M5 stack is um, a completely different concept from the get-go. As you can see, it arrives in a little box. Now, I'm not uh, a fan of unboxing videos, but that's what we're going to do. So, as you saw uh, previously, it's a really neat and well-finished device with the SD card slot and the expansion, everything well labelled. Very neat indeed. And even the packaging of the of the supplied USB cables, they give you some some breakout cables. You have stickers. Once you get more than one of these guys, you'll probably want to uh, identify them. So there's some numbers in there. A quick start guide with some uh, useful links for the, uh, the installation of the driver and the Arduino IDE. So we'll be going through through that and a little explanation of all the the parts and the interconnects. So a very professional and um, a breath of fresh air really for those that have looked at um, development kits before and thought that um, no it just looks horribly DIY. You wouldn't be adverse to showing this to your friends or your, or your family and um, they would be forgiven for thinking that it was a, a purchased product. So let's move on now to uh, how we get this thing programmed. Because I've installed um, ESP32 before in my Arduino IDE, the only parts that I'm missing uh, are the actual M5 stack uh, examples. So I'm just going to go through that. Um, if you need to install the expressive uh, ESP32 libraries, then the instructions are given on the card. So the first thing we need to do is to navigate to the Arduino libraries directory, which will usually be on this path here, your PC documents Arduino libraries. And just with the, the cursor in some free space here, if we hold down the control and shift keys and right mouse click, we get the option to open a command window in that particular folder. Uh, we then type in the commands that we're given to get the M5 stack GitHub repository. So once that has been done, we can now test it by running the Arduino IDE. So in our Arduino IDE now, if we go to the Files menu and Examples, we now find that we have the M5 stack, and consisting of the obviously the basics and more advanced stuff, games, modules, etc. So we're now in good shape to um, to to test our M5 stack. So we'll move on to that. If we power the unit up for the first time, it has a little factory inbuilt uh, test program, so it just goes through the display test there, and then something about the gyroscope, and then it tests the Wi-Fi, and it found three networks there. And then simply it finishes on this little screen where it detects if you press the, the button, so we get ABC. Uh, whichever button that we press, so that's quite simple. Um, so we know basically that the, the, the thing is working. We can connect it now to our Arduino IDE and try out some of the test uh, examples. So in the M5 stack examples, uh, there are some very basic ones, but that is essentially what we've just seen on the, on the display. So let's try something more advanced. Go it, for example, into the displays. Um, what have we got? Various things. How about a nice digital clock? So this should be 
ready to go so let's just uh, try and uh, upload the sketch immediately so now it's going to try and uh, flash the unit Now what I've found is that um, clearly it, it doesn't work out of the box. Now I did find on the documentation on the website that in some instances you need to press the power reset button to get it to program. Didn't quite take in time. Let's try that again. So it finally appears to have uh, taken the sketch. So wait and see. Finally, we get the digital clock um, installed. On this particular example, it seems I have to drop the board rate. Now, I am using a USB extension cable, but I have tried the unit directly um, connected to the laptop and the same problem occurred. So uh, I'd be interested if you'd uh, leave your experiences down in the, in the comments to see if you encounter the same issue. So having got that, let's uh, try some of the other examples as well, see how they look. So this clearly is the uh, meters uh, example and uh, that's a really neat display. Obviously you could make something uh, like a decibel meter or any, any, any kind of meter and this uh, example will, uh, will get you on your way. A nice analog clock. Now the last example here is the Tetris game from the examples and simply with the A and B buttons go left and right and start with the, the C button here. Uh, you can see I'm not very good at this. Uh, if we reset the device, we get the starting block there. This also inverts it. So what should we do with this one? Right. Anyway, you get uh, you get the idea that um, obviously you can read inputs from the the buttons here, and uh, have yourself a lot of fun. Let's um, see if we can get on to a more serious example. So, as an example of the uh, versatility of the M5 stack, I've found this example online of a rather neat uh, spectrum analyzer. I thought we'd have a go at building that. Here we can see this, the sketch I've loaded in and uh, I'm not going to go through it all here. I'll provide links as always into the description. And I've also found uh, a fix for the, the strange loading problem. I'll show you how that works as well. So this takes a little while to, uh, to compile and upload. So we'll just start that off. We can see here on the, on the unit, the, the last uh, Tetris sketch that was on there. And what we have here is a, uh, a ceramic capacitor. This is a uh, 0.1 um, microfarad capacitor. That's been marked as a, as a 104. It simply connects between the reset pin and ground. That uh, has proven effective. We're now uploading to the device and we can see um, I've added on the required uh, little microphone board that we can see there. And if we knock that sensor, we can see the, uh, the, the display uh, moving up and down there. So we know that it's working. A final little musical interlude. Ooh. 